Hello again, I am Blunty. Now, if you've not seen my review, benchmarks, and gameplay video on NVIDIA's 900 series little brother, the GTX 950 yet, hit the link up because this video bounces off that one because this video is about a specific flavor of the GTX 950, specifically the Gigabyte OC Edition GTX 950. OC standing for overclocked, of course. Now, as the name suggests, the OC Edition is factory overclocked right out of the box, though it is a pretty conservative overclock, punching up the stock clock of 1024 MHz and 1188 MHz boost up to 1102 MHz and 1279 MHz boost. And in a few minutes, I'm going to show you just how far I could push it past that factory overclock manually. But we should start with the hardware. The cooler on board is the Windforce 2X, and we'll talk about the noise levels from these fancy looking fan blades in a moment. It's a pretty compact card, 42 by 208 by 136 millimeters. It needs only a single six pin power connector, as all GTX 950s do, and the TDP is just 90 watts. Now, in practical terms, that means so long as your system has a PSU capable of about 450 watts or more system wide, the GTX 950 should be quite happy inside your rig. Also, like all GTX 950s, it's loaded up with 2GB of GDDR5 memory running at 6.6GHz. And again, I'll get to overclocking in just a moment. Output-wise, you'll score a DVD-i, DVD-D, HDMI 2.0, and of course a DisplayPort. It'll drive multi-display setups and maxes out at 5K resolution. Overall, it's a clean and simple design, befitting its budget-friendly positioning in the market. Sadly, that also means it doesn't have a nice backplate on it. Absolutely not necessary at all on a card like this for heat-spreading purposes or such, but it is a nice aesthetic touch. But that is about it, physically speaking. Thrown into the system here, we can look at the cooler noise. Now, much like the larger Windforce cooler on my own G1 Gaming Edition Gigabyte GTX 970, this latest flavor of Windforce cooler, combined with NVIDIA's Maxwell chip's already thermally friendly performance, is pretty well behaved. Staying at a low and light level of background hum while idle and under light loads, but maxed out to 100%, it does get, well, let's call it aggressive. Now, I want to be clear about this. What you're about to hear is only for relative comparison's sake, comparing one noise to another noise through the same microphone. The camera's mic really doesn't give you a good idea of how it actually sounds to the human ear under normal conditions and in a closed case, because I was recording it right next to the cooler in an open case. But for comparison's sake, between the fan speeds, this still should be instructive. So yeah, 100% is what I'd call obnoxious. However, the good news about all this is, outside of my most aggressive attempts to overclock, the fans actually never even needed to run at full speed at all. Ever. In fact, under a full brutal load of benchmarking, I set up the fans manually to sit at a much more subtle sounding 70% fan speed, unless things got up past the 80 degree mark, in which point I'd let it max out because you really don't want to go above that. And the thing is, it never even reached that far, leaving it for 15 minutes and churning away maxed out under full load, under my overclocks, even the 70% fan speed, the temperatures stayed comfortably in the mid to high 70s. So while the cooler can certainly be loud, in normal gaming use, you can drop the fan control to manual and set things up a bit like this to keep the card remarkably quiet under load. You'll probably never even hear it spin up to full speed. So, all of that out of the way, we've already seen what this card can do at the out-of-box overclocked speeds in my GTX 950 review video, so let's move right on to the overclocks. Now, Gigabyte uses a binning process to make sure the GPUs they put into their various overclocking edition cards are able to actually cope with the extra demands of an overclock. And given that I've personally had quite good success in overclocking my GTX 970 G1 Gaming Edition, I walked into this expecting a pretty good overclock. And I got it. An afternoon and evening of fiddling and tweaking and testing and benchmarking and, of course, simply gaming had me land this particular card's maximum stable overclock at 1500 MHz base and 1677 MHz boost, which is a kick up the arse of 46% over the stock clocks of the GTX 950. That's pretty respectable, I'd say. 
Memory-wise, I added another 1290MHz over the 6.6 .6 stock clocks, ramping things up to a full 7.9MHz. And better yet, these speeds were obtained without having to boost up the core voltage, which can be a bit of a risky proposition. In fact, all I did power-wise was move the target power to 115%, which wasn't actually strictly necessary, but I felt more comfortable giving it that bit of headroom. I did actually get a couple of successful benchmark runs from clocks a touch higher than these, but it wasn't 100% stable, crashing out of me a couple of times. And of course, overclocking can be a bit of a silicon lottery. Some chips do better than others, some worse, so your mileage may vary. But I'm pretty happy with what I squeezed out here, out of this particular card. And as I touched on earlier, even maxing out the overclock between the WinForce 2 cooler and the NVIDIA Maxwell GPU chip's lovely habit of not baking itself, my temps still stayed locked in comfortably under the 80 degree mark, even under artificial benchmarks. And other normal gaming, they floated significantly lower, closer to the mid-60s actually, which is a really comfortable place to be. Performance-wise, there were significant frame rate increases to be seen. Hitman Absolution, at the GeForce Experience recommended settings, moved from 52 frames per second minimum to 58. Which means if you turn down just one more graphic option somewhere, you'll be playing without ever dipping below 60 frames per second. And it's already averaging 71 frames per second under the overclock. It's a nearly identical story for Tomb Raider also, moving up from lows that dipped below 60 frames per second to a point where it never drops below that magic number PC gamers love, and kicking the average frame rate up a full 14%. The Heaven benchmark score leapt up from 996 out of the box to 1108, with minimum frame rates leaping just over double. And finally on our rounds of numbers that get bigger and bigger and bigger, 3D Mark time. Out of the box, it already scored a pretty respectable 17,515, but once my overclock slammed into it, it cranked out 1,100 extra points, delivering a final score of 18,612, and pushing from 60% to 66% better than all results on the bar graph o meter thingy. <laughs> and again, while it is the wrong benchmark for a card at this end of the market, it's still interesting seeing what an overclock can do to the Fire Strike score. Out of the box, 5,387, and under the overclock, we squeeze in just over the 6,000 point mark. That's an extra 11%, not too bad at all. Now, I've not looked at any other flavour of this particular card, so I can't really directly compare them, but the Gigabyte OC edition of the GTX 950 is a very solid card in its own right. It overclocks really quite nicely, especially for a budget end card, and it stays nice and cool without getting loud. Personally speaking, I'd be quite happy with one of these in my system. Of course, I will be putting my own GTX 970 back into my system once I'm done testing this card, because, duh. But I'm already thinking of creating a new build, just so I can use this card in a HDPC slash Steambox setup. So, please, if you found this video useful or interesting, would you be so kind as to do the thing with the buttons? And please drop the comment bombs about what you thought about the overclock performance boosts, how they compare to your own cards and overclocking experiences, or maybe you just want to share your surprise and perhaps nerd shame at the fact that this overclocked beastie now eclipses the 3D Mark scores of your card, which just a couple of years ago was considered pretty monster. <laughs> Thanks for watching, I am Blunty, and I will catch you next time.